This is Michael with the general reading for Leo Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of July 2020. Happy birthday to those of you who have birthdays coming up, you Leo Sun folks. I do hope that this finds you well and in relatively good spirits. I want to thank all of you who have supported this channel with your likes, shares, comments, and subscribes. It's because of all of you I'm able to continue putting out these messages and doing this incredible work, so thank you all so much for your support. It really does mean a lot to me. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and also follow me on my other social media where I'll occasionally post giveaways and also have uh, pick a card readings or general card readings at this point on my Instagram as well as uh, astrology blogs and other blogs on my website. Um, all of that is down below as well as links for personal readings, Reiki sessions, and donations for those of you who feel so called. Now, for those of you who are brand new to this channel, I do like to go into the astrology a little bit. I will kind of reference that as I am pulling the cards for you, but if you'd like a more comprehensive view of what is going to be happening astrologically for July, I do recommend that you look at the astrology horoscope I have left down below. It's, uh, I'm sorry, the astrology blog I have linked down below. Um, that should give you a better sense of what's going to be happening in July as well as the next several months. And let me tell you, we do have some interesting energy uh, this month, and I, I think it it's going to be a doozy. I'm not going to lie. Uh, so you may want to be taking a look at that and kind of figuring out where um, all that energy falls in your natal chart. Again, I have all sorts of links and resources down below. If you don't really understand what I'm talking about, it should be able to help you figure out you know, more of what I'm referencing here in this reading. I am going to start shuffling for you now, Leo. Really curious to see what we have for you in July. And as I'm doing that, I just want to give my friendly reminder that this is a general reading, meaning not all the messages are going to be meant for all of you. It is up to your own intuition and discernment to figure out what applies to your own life and what should be left behind for somebody else. If this reading just doesn't resonate very strongly, or you'd like greater clarity on another area of your life, you're more than welcome to look at your Moon, Rising, or Venus signs. And if you don't know what those are, again, there is a natal chart calculator in the description box down below that should be able to help you out. So what are the messages for my Leo folks, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for July 2020? Show me clearly, please. We already have the Judgment in Reverse. Very interesting. Something that hasn't quite been finished is coming back from the past. And it's going to be affecting you in a pretty significant way. And I'm not going to lie, you know, for some of you that could be part of the pandemic, that could be part of what's going on globally right now, we're definitely not out of the woods in, in that respect. But I actually feel like, Leo, there is something else that is going on in your personal life that might be re-emerging for you in the first half of July, or maybe it already did, especially if this involved an air sign, uh, Gemini, Aquarius, or Libra here with this King of Swords in the reverse. Again, a lot of reversal energy. I think someone is afraid to speak truth. And that could be you. That could be someone around you. Someone is definitely wearing a mask with the Seven of Cups. Someone or something might be coming back from the past and it's not exactly what it seems like. So be very skeptical if that's happening for you, especially as we're in Mercury retrograde, which is going to be occurring until the, uh, I want to say the 12th. Um, and then even in that post-shadow phase, it's usually a time when there's revelations, when we kind of get the memos that we missed, so to speak. So there may be some news that you get around that time. But I actually feel like something is not being said that really needs to be said in the first half of July. Maybe that's involving something, you know, global with what's going on in the world. And, you know, you're seeing something that's upsetting you and you're not saying anything about it. Or you're seeing something that just doesn't sit right in the pit of your stomach. And you don't know how to address this situation or this person. But I feel like you can only evade this sort of energy for so long. 
This may also be energy that is around you. So if this isn't quite making sense for you, consider that this might be talking about another energy. If you're feeling some weird sort of tension with a person, especially an air sign, or just someone who's really guarded with their emotions, there could be something that needs to be said that isn't being said. So let's take a look now at what the animal cards have to say, kind of clarify this energy here a little bit. Frog. <laughs> Interesting. Um, so there's a couple of messages I'm getting with this. If there is someone coming back from the past or someone who's recently come back from the past, it's like, don't go kissing frogs I'm expecting someone to become a prince. You know, what you see is kind of what you get. Um, or actually, this person might be putting on a pretty good front, but it's like, I feel like you've seen the games here. And maybe you haven't quite learned a lesson from the past here. And this person's kind of coming back to test you a little bit. The universe is really checking in to see if you've been learning these lessons, learning this discernment. Some of you are also, um, this is actually involving a home situation. Because when I think of frog, I think of the tadpole that, you know, grows up in the pond, grows its legs and leaves, but it does occasionally return. Some of you may be returning home or connecting with family or talking about that in the start of July. Something to do with family or home here. And there is definitely a lot of skirting around a hard conversation. And it's like something, again, that needs to be said. It even, I, I dare say, feels connected to your destiny. Why you are incarnate at this time. Why you are on this planet. And there has been a transformation that you have gone through. And I feel like you are returning to a situation, or a situation may be returning to you. And you might be seeing that it is no longer a match. Or there are things that are out of alignment that need to be brought into alignment. And that's what you're there to do. So that's really, really interesting. Um, let's kind of explore this a little more. Let's pull some more cards here. And you know, this is just gonna be a really intense month. And I think there's gonna be a lot that gets exposed, especially with the lunar eclipse that's happening on July 5th in Capricorn. But with Mercury being retrograde, there might be some delays with that. And again, I, I kind of think of like post-retrograde, post-shadow phase, after Mercury retrograde, after it goes direct, that's when we start to see like all the miscommunications and misunderstandings. We may have thought we were on the same page with people, and then we kind of realize afterwards we might not actually have been, or maybe we are realizing some more nuance that we may have overlooked. Interesting. So there's definitely a big change here for you, Leo, with this Wheel of Fortune. And again, we were talking about destiny. You cannot outrun destiny. You may be trying to outrun this truth. It might not even be with other people. You could be trying to outrun your own truth, Leo, and you're just not going to be able to do it. And the, the more willing you are to move with this and to go forward and to reach for your destiny, I think the quicker the rewards will come. But you're feeling very worn down with this Nine of Wands. You might feel like other people have beat you down. You might feel like you kind of need to retreat. But I actually feel like, Leo, you have gone through a lot and you're getting out of the worst of it towards the end of July here at least for you personally. And it's interesting because we might be seeing a lot of things kind of relapsing us in July. We could see more shutdowns, we could see more conflict, we could see something new that just makes us feel like we're kind of going backwards. Again, I really recommend looking at the astrology blog if you kind of want a better sense of what I'm talking about with all of that. Um, because we are going through a major shift, and the shift is happening. It's positive. But it's also exhausting. But I feel like you've been... You've gone, you've come so far, Leo, 
And you might not even have a clear sense of where this is all going. Towards the end of July, with this Two of Wands, you might feel like you've lost an option or lost an opportunity. I don't think that's true. At least one that was actually in alignment or beneficial for you. There's definitely a loss of perspective. Or a change in your perspective that seems like a loss. At least on the surface. But I really want you to challenge that. Because you still have this Wheel of Fortune here. You actually have some good karma coming through. You are being rewarded for all the effort, or you're seeing a culmination come in, especially with this Capricorn Eclipse. And I believe for you, what is Capricorn? God, I always do this. I, I need to really plan ahead here. For you, Capricorn is your sixth house, which is your house of routine, the house of the way you're living your life. And I think you are going to be making some big changes to that. And it could be just you taking better care of yourself. You might be feeling really run down by the end of the month because there's so much that's changing. So you do need to be careful with your energy here. And you might not be seeing things clearly with this Two of Wands in reverse. If you're feeling too drained, if you're feeling really emotional, you might be losing sight of the bigger picture. So don't get too swept up in that. Or if you are swept up in that, I'm not going to tell you how to feel. If, if you are swept up in that, just understand you might not be seeing the full perspective in that moment. And you know, we've been talking a lot about this shift for a really long time. And even in the past few years, we've talked a lot about it. And I think it's come in a way that a lot of us didn't expect. <laughs> you know, we talked about ascension and it's actually more like an uprising. So maybe this uprising, this, this kind of rising up in yourself, is actually the thing that you wanted to have happen. It's just not comfortable right now. You know, it's almost like childbirth. When someone finds out they're pregnant, it, it's not like they're immediately thinking about the labor pain. They're not thinking about the immense amount of responsibility that they're taking on. Maybe they are, but usually we just have this kind of like glow, like, oh, this new thing, this new possibility, this new life, it's, it's coming through and it's so exciting, at least for some people. Um, I think a lot of us aren't really seeing that this hard time really is the birth of this thing we've been trying to create, both collectively and personally. And it takes time, it takes effort, it's labor. <laughs> And we're like, oh shit, what have I gotten myself into? And there might be times you're really questioning this, like, why did I think I, I want this? Why did I think this was the direction I wanted to go in? I feel like I'm stuck. I don't see where this is going. You may have moments like that throughout the month, but I don't want you to freak out. Let's pull another animal card here. Tarantula. Yeah, shedding new, shedding the old and letting the new come through. And really going after what it is that you want. I know you're tired. I know it's scary. I know you feel worn down and it's like, by the end of July, you might be feeling like, I can't go forward. I don't know how to do this. Tarantula is all about finding the attunement to move forward. And right as I look down at the clock, it's 555. So 555, there's a huge change that's happening for you. And honestly, Leo, these eclipses, this eclipse cycle has really been hitting you quite hard. And we started the Cancer Capricorn eclipses in July 2018. We're now just finishing them up with this last eclipse in um, 
what is it? It's in Capricorn on July 4th or 5th, depending on where you are in the world. And there is a completion here. There is the completion of one thing and the beginning of another. And it might not always be smooth sailing. And with tarantula, it's an ambush predator, okay? It's not spider waiting for something to come to it. Tarantula will kind of sneak up and strike. And it's covered in these fine hairs. It's very sensitive. It's very intuitive. And we do have one last new moon in your 12th house. We actually had this for the solar eclipse on June 21st, and we're going to be having this again on July 20th, 20th, 22nd, I want to say. It's one of those. I do apologize. You can look at the astrology blog. I would actually Google it to figure out what time that is for you locally. Um, but with that last new moon, or the, the new moon in Cancer, the second new moon of the year, we only get a new moon in one sign twice, or twice in one sign. Sorry, Mercury retrograde is really affecting my ability to communicate all of this. Let's try again. Each year, there is a new moon in a sign that happens twice. Ordinarily, it only happens once. This year, it's happening in Cancer. We started off with an eclipse, in the first Cancer New Moon, and this one is again kind of reinforcing that energy, and that's a very spiritual energy for you, because the sign that comes before you in astrology is your 12th house. It's your subconscious, it's your spirituality, it's your letting go. You've been going through a lot of deep subconscious changes and really questioning your conditioning and, you know, really looking at all of that, and I actually think that there is going to be some healing there for you this month. And it might feel exhausting in the moment, it might feel like you're just so tired and don't know where to go or how to move forward, but I actually see that there is this path that is opening up for you. It might not be in July, I think it's a little bit further out, being totally honest, but this still feels really powerful and really, really good. And it's like your destiny is finally coming in, and you're finally embracing that. And we did have that eclipse on, what was it, like June 5th? June 8th? June 9th? I forget when it was. Oh my gosh. But it, it was the eclipse in Sagittarius, which is your, you know, your creativity, your joy, your passion, your purpose, maybe, for some of you. And you're really stepping into a much brighter phase, even if it doesn't feel like it right now. And again, I'm just saying, look at the blog for the collective. I think it might be interesting and helpful for some of you too. I am going to pull one more card and then we're going to kind of wrap up here. And I'm going to pull a plant, a botanical oracle card here for Leo. Sage, you have purify as your message, or sage. Interesting. So let's see. And sage is a really interesting plant, because sage actually really bolsters your own energy. And I, I almost visualize this as like, you know how when you have a dent in your car, they have like the pressure bells or the vacuum bells that suck out that dent, that pop it back out? That's almost what sage does. It strengthens your aura wherever you have auric tears. And it, it kind of bolsters your own energy to prevent negative energy from entering your field. So I feel like some of you may be kind of doing that or needing to do that. Maybe you're going to be burning some sage to kind of clear out some energy here. Um, there is definitely some shedding that's happening for some of you with Tarantula. But let's see, so Sage, um... Native to the Mediterranean region, Sage has naturalized in many places throughout the world and is easy to find in gardens, the wild, 
and of close at your local grocer. There are many varieties of sage, including red sage, broadleaf, and even pineapple. White or green sage is the most commonly used as seasoning and in medicinal preparations. It can be used to treat snake bite, to increase women's fertility, and more. Sage has also long been also has a long history of medicinal and culinary use, and in modern times it is enjoyed as an ornamental garden plant. White sage grows easily from seeds and requires little maintenance once established. It can even be grown indoors, though note this plant prefers a clay or terracotta container as it needs good drainage. Whether indoors or outside, find a sunny spot with good drainage for this plant and watch it flourish. Purify is the oracle property of this card, as sage has long been used in, since ancient times for warding off evil, cleansing spaces, and banishing negative energy. Smudging, the burning of sage bundles, most commonly white sage, is a practice done to clear and rebalance the essential energy of a person or space. Some people relate to this relate to this herb to the Hierophant card in the tarot deck, but I think it is a better companion to the Page of Wands, Page of Wands and its fresh approach to the war world. We are urged to try new things or welcome new people into our life. The Eight of Pentacles also speaks of clarity and focus, specifically concerning our work or craft. This clearing, purifying energy of sage is a powerful tool for anyone trying to focus or start anew. Yes, so we are really trying to start some new chapters here, and maybe sage is a powerful plant for you to be working with. And, you know, smudging your space, smudging yourself, I do feel like you are leaving behind some situations that just aren't serving you anymore. And, you know, whatever it was or whoever it was you were with was sort of holding you back. And you kind of had to wear a mask. And it's like you're coming back into your own skin. <laughs> so interesting with this molting imagery, too. It's like, yeah, you really are coming into your skin. And that's a great way to start your birthday. That's a great way to start a new year of your life. For those of you who have a birthday in July or in August. And even fraud, there's this kind of transformation, the shedding. And those are all the messages I'm getting for you right now, Leo. I do hope that this was helpful. Be sure to hit like and subscribe. If you would like your own uh, reading or a Reiki session, I do have all of my links down below. And I will see you all in the next video. Take care, Leo.